ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is Kia's quick and dirty guide to Oaxaca, Mexico for digital nomads. Now, if you've seen any of my travel guides before, you know this is not the definitive guide. This is going to be the most simple, straightforward. This is one white gringo man's experience. This is not everything about Oaxaca, Mexico. I'm also gonna break down the city by category. So if there is a certain category you're particularly interested in, I'll have all of that linked up below. You can kind of skip around. I'll have that overall score at the very end if you stick around so check that out leave it in the comments below let me know what you thought hopefully it's helpful let's jump into it let's talk money dinero the price i'm going to give it a seven and that's out of a 10 a 10 would be like dirt cheap everything is super affordable really easy it's not going to be as cheap as asia but the prices are still pretty good i got a one bedroom apartment i, I think it was like 350 400 and then when the pandemic really got going dropped it down to 250 for an airbnb that's kind of the ballpark that you can shoot for for me the prices for food were very affordable in terms of you know tacos and street food are always going to be a couple bucks for a nice dinner it might cost you you know 10 15 20 dollars per person but that's you know for a really nice meal somewhere so the prices are definitely good like i said not the best but not bad i'm going to give it a seven on price for people or culture i'm giving oaxaca a 10 and that's because oaxaca is unlike any other place in mexico that i've visited the food right you have the mezcal you have mole you have playudas you have chocolate and like obviously chocolate is a universal thing but there's like this certain type of oaxacan chocolate that they do that's amazing the way that the women dress is also truly unique and distinct if you're into culture you're into history there are a few places that really do it like Oaxaca. Next on the list is infrastructure getting around. Again, I'm going with a seven, maybe a 6.5. It isn't super difficult. It's also not effortless. For example, Mexico City has traffic too, but you call an Uber like pretty much anywhere and it's gonna come and pick you up pretty quickly. In Oaxaca, there were these taxis called colectivos, which, and there were some that were certain colors that people told me were like sometimes like gang related or had to, you know, do with cartels. And so that was a little bit tricky. The Didi in the Uber definitely does work it isn't as prompt or as quick or responsive sometimes as these bigger cities, of course, but it's still there, still usable, which is why, like I said, I'm giving it a seven. Not the best, but certainly it's not bad. It's not like being way out in Bali where you have to have a motorbike or something to get around. The infrastructure is really rad. The sidewalks are big. It's easy to walk around. The city's very flat for the most part. There are big plazas, there's good internet, and you can pop into cafes and stuff. Great for someone who likes to walk like myself. So accommodation, I'm coming in at a strong seven. Great options on Airbnb. And I had a harder time going around just trying to like find monthly rentals, just going around knocking on doors. A lot of people will want maybe a longer contract. If you're looking just for a room, in a house somewhere because you're going for Spanish class or something that definitely exists. Those are always much easier to find because it's just a room. But I didn't find it as easy as some of these places in Southeast Asia, but that's just Latin America in general. At the same time, online platforms, Facebook, ask around, use Airbnb. 7 out of 10, maybe. For Oaxaca, let me break this into two pieces. I'm going to go social as a 5, and I'm going to go dating as an 8. But that's because, for me, the social life in Oaxaca, at least when I was there, was a lot of expats. There are expats, but there weren't a lot of nomads. It wasn't like this younger nomad crowd that you might find in a Da Nang, in a Medellin, in a Mexico City. A lot of older expats that were either settled in Oaxaca, or there for learning a language, or there for exploring and history, and a lot of, like, old small Canadian women that were like there because they wanted to eat you know Mexican food which is cool I'm not against that but it's different than like the vibe that you're gonna get in like a Mexico City in Condesa or like in Laureles or Poblado like that they just feel like there are these certain cities that have a young nomad vibe nomad meetups Da Nang that I didn't feel when I was in Oaxaca. Maybe that's changed, but in my experience, that's a five. In terms of dating, I've got a special soft spot in my heart for Oaxacanas. I love Latinas, and there's something special about and women from Oaxaca. At least in my experience, they had this certain flair to them, which I really love, but they're also super sweet and really cared about history and culture. And that to me was special and unique. That a lot of times when I'm meeting a girl or I'm dating someone, that's I want to learn about the culture. That's why I, I try to date local girls. I want to learn more about the city and stuff. And I dated online in Oaxaca. I dated offline and just met cool girls in real life. At least as a gringo guy, I'd put it as an eight. It was, I had some really great experiences with women there. 
language, I'm gonna give this a four. You need to learn some Spanish. This is where I actually learn Spanish at a Spanish school and then with a private tutor during the pandemic. And it was difficult at first, but it's gonna force you to learn Spanish. So if you wanna learn, highly recommend it because there's not a ton of English. If you aren't planning on learning Spanish, don't know any Spanish, it could be a little bit difficult. So four out of five. The weather, I'm gonna give an eight. It has a wet season and a dry season. They're like two very distinct. There's like one day when it switches and then it starts to rain every day. Then it switches and it's like dry and it doesn't rain at all. And for me, I really like that, especially in Mexico, a lot of these places, even when it is rainy season, it's still a beautiful day for like 80% of the day and that might rain a little bit in the afternoon. It can get crazy a little bit when it's like the super wet season, but for me, at least in my experience, it was sunny, it was never too hot. It didn't get hot, of course, here in Mexico, you know, Southern Mexico, but in my experience, I really enjoyed the weather in Oaxaca and so that I'm giving it an eight. Okay, so, so what does this break down for overall? I'm gonna give Oaxaca a seven or 7.5. Why? Obviously we talked about some of the best things are weather's amazing, people are amazing, culture's amazing, infrastructure is good, super distinct culture and history. What are some of the drawbacks? For me, it's not a place that I would recommend posting up for super long. I feel like I started to get a little bit bored after six, seven months. In a place like Oaxaca, you might miss some of the small conveniences of a big city. And to me, sometimes I can get a little bougie, sometimes I want those things. So that's why, that's what it is for me. But overall, highly recommend it. If you agree, disagree, tell me what you think in the comments below. Hopefully this was helpful. Thank you again for tuning in and I'll have more travel guides coming your way soon. Hasta luego, ciao.